I want to show you a chest. Here's a before picture of this piece that we had rescued. Now, if you remember, the exciting part is I had actually painted this piece for our last live event in black. And I thought, you know, not everybody in their house is going to be able to go out and buy a new piece of furniture every time, even if it's a porch pickup. Possibly they're going to walk around their house and they're going to say, what are pieces in here that we have already? I want to repaint them or I want to be able to up my game a little bit. This is your project. Um, we had actually painted it black before and we had waxed it. So I made sure that I took all my wax off. Um, there again, you can use vinegar and you can use a water mixture, half and half, take all the wax off. And then I base coated the entire piece with frankly scarlet, with entire red. Now this is going to be a project that may take you a couple of days to do, primarily because it's a taping procedure. You're going to have to be measuring it off and you want to make sure that you've, you've got all of your, not your angles, but also where you're going to do your pencil markings, that they're very accurate. My suggestion would be to even start off with maybe some, a piece of plywood. I love sample boards. Most people know this. When I'm creating different color combinations or finish combinations, I always use sample boards for that. So the same thing could be done with this. I love this idea for a wall. I think it would be amazing. Um, I want to actually do it on some chargers uh, that go underneath my plates. But so the first thing you're going to do, you're going to paint the entire piece with Frankly Scarlet, which is, this is the red. What I did is I marked off with a pencil, you're going to need to get a ruler, and mark it off three inch stripes. So you'll notice here, I taped, my marking is right here, and I put my tape on the outside. So this is going to be the area where I'm actually going to be painting. Depending on if you're, like with our piece, we actually had um, vertical stripes, but you could change it up to where it was vertical or horizontal. So I want you to go all the way across your piece of wood where it's gonna basically look like this. Now, you'll notice a little something different. When I go in to paint this stripe on, I mixed a color. I want you to be able to take some of the Frankly Scarlet and the black and mix it together. See how much darker it is? It's more of a burgundy red. That's what makes it look like it's an actual woven fabric that you would see uh, with a tartan look. So here I've got some uh, water-based glaze. If you just ask the person in the paint department um, or the person that you like working with in Ace Hardware, tell them that you need a water-based glaze. I mixed it four to one. That allows you to be able to see about the percentage that you need to be mixing this. So I'm gonna pour the glaze into my paint and I'm gonna stir it up. Now you might say, why is that? I don't want you working with a straight one-step paint when you're doing this because the whole idea is that it's a little bit more sheer. So adding the glaze to it allows you to be able to paint with a more sheer paint. Still water-based, it's still gonna be cleaned up with soap and water. So to be able to show you how I did this, I actually used a little foam roller. So I've got a little plastic tray here just to be able to kind of show you pour your paint into the tray, and then that way when you load it up, you're going to be just rolling it on like this. One coat is perfectly enough. You don't have to come back and add two or three more. So basically rolling your paint on, and then coming back so you can take your tape off, so that way you can see your stripes. So now I've achieved my base coat with Frankly Scarlet. I allowed it to dry um, a good 40 minutes or so, and then I've come back and I've taped it off in three inch segments, put my tape on the outside of it, and then I rolled on my burgundy red color, which was my Frankly Scarlet and my black. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I wanna add my black striping the opposite direction. 
So that way you see how I've got my burgundy stripe this, just turn it to the side like this and do the same thing again. Just measure three inches. So see how I came over from the edge three inches and I striped it out with my tape again. I just marked it off and I laid in three of my black stripes. Now it's the same process. I just want you to tape it off, roll the black on, and then I came back and I wanted to add my white. Now, is it possible, can I get a shot of the chest again? The tartan chest finished. I, I possibly, if I didn't want to come back and add the white, this is all a process. When you're going through and you're working on a project and it's like, the white would really make it pop. And I had found a picture of an old tartan plaid and it had the white in it. So I came back and I basically just took my tape and decided on where I wanted it to go. On the black, I, I ran it right down that complete band, just like you see here. So as I had taped off the black, I just came back and I laid my tape in the very center of my, my black stripe and then just painted it white on top of it. I do recommend when you're going to be coming in like this um, on this tape that you need to make sure that you're using just a small china bristle brush and not use the roller because you might get too much excess and go off on the sides too much. So the main, the main thing is with this project that you're going to see, it's going to be taping. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I want you to be able to just kind of lay it out. But my suggestion would be to really um, experiment on a piece of wood like this or maybe a cabinet door. If you know me, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm all about going to Habitat and getting old cabinet doors to be able to do any of my projects on before I start working on a piece of furniture. I would absolutely do that. If you're nervous about painting your kitchen cabinets or even a piece of furniture, go to Habitat and get a cabinet door. Make sure you clean it well. There's going to be a lot of dirt and grime on it. And go pick out your favorite color and come back. Make sure you start with a synthetic brush and brush it on and then do your light wax and your dark wax if you want to be able to age it and see what it looks like. Now on this tartan plaid chest, um, I did not use dark wax. I wanted it to stay really bright and clean. I'm going to take this off. I want to be able to just kind of show you what it looks like after I take my tape off. That beautiful little tiny white stripe that just makes everything pop and come to life. Isn't that awesome? See, this you could work on a, a really cute tray. There again, I'm afraid I'm going to have to try this on a small wall here at the studio. I want to be able to show you, um, you can feel of it, if, I, if you don't want to wax it, you don't have to. That's what's so great about our One Step and the differences between other product lines. You do have to seal them. A lot of them, if you take a wet rag and you wipe over it, it will come off. With ours, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to take my clear wax, though, because I want to be able to have a little bit of sheen. That's the reason I'm going to be using it. And I'm going to make sure that I saturate my brush very well there again. And I'm going to take a piece of cardboard. And I'm just going to make sure that I get it off. And it's all the way around the bristles of the brush. That's the whole reason when you go from here, you don't want to go from the wax container in the brush to here because you're going to have too much on it. So make sure you offload and it's evenly distributed. And then I'm going to come back, see how I'll crosshatch it and then feather it out. You don't want to apply wax to a piece in a brushing motion like this like you would a piece of furniture. You want to make sure that it's loaded up well. Cross hatch it and then fan it out. Now on the clear wax, it's going to probably take about 15 to 20 minutes for it to come to tack before you buff it. So that way it's, it's giving me a really pretty sheen. It's going to have a nice seal to it that I'm going to be able to come back with a lint-free rag and just buff it. When I'm doing this, it's like I'm buffing a shoe. I do want to make sure that I get to the side and I can, I can see the sheen of it. 
so it's buffed up and really pretty. Now, when you're going through the antiquing process, and I do want to cover this because I, I didn't have a piece this time that I used the Dust of Ages on. The Dust of Ages is a great product to be able to use in conjunction with your light antique wax and just a little bit of application with the dark antique wax because it literally goes down into um, the wax itself and kind of ages it and gives you that dust of ages look. Please stay in touch with us on social media and know that it's your turn now to take this knowledge and go enjoy the bragging rights.